it's all properly set up so I want to talk about a practical case at kind of a middle-sized customer of us a collective customer of next and Colabra um, there's a customer of about 30 40,000 users so neither big nor small I mean the small customers you have four five thousand users ten thousand then you have the bigger ones hundreds and thousands to tens of millions uh, this is kind of in the middle uh, I think probably more of you can kind of identify with a medium-sized company or organization in this case it's some government um, at the end I'll also talk a little bit about scaling up further as you might know Nextcloud has basically no scaling lim uh, yeah no scaling limits and uh, I'll go a little bit into some global scale capabilities there but let's start with um, SIP SIP um, First, going to talk about what SIB is, and, and please note that it's French. I'm going to abuse their name as well as any other French name that I will encounter. I apologize for that in advance. Um, you know, c'est la vie, I believe that the French say. I'm going to try and give a bit of context, talk about Collabra, of course, and how it's used, and then talk about what the next steps are for an organization if you want to scale up further. So SIB is a major global public actor providing digital services for health, care, and public sector in France. There are about 500 organizations uh, where they offer uh, digital transformation services to, uh, as well as public entities there as well. Uh, and they've been working with Nextcloud already for a long time, but uh, the bigger Nextcloud and Collabora deployment was started in 2019. So, Here's the team, or at least a, a part of the team of the sysadmins, obviously not the entire SIB, um, but these are uh, the people I think that manage the data center uh, should be located in Rennes, but they also have an office in the city of Lille. Um, and the project we're going to talk about is um, about the ULA Vilaine department, again, my French, pardon, my French. Uh, that includes uh, a lot of uh, middle schools in France. So the, they offer infrastructure to teachers and pupils. Yeah? So computers, servers, uh, hosted applications, network and support. And the goal was to modernize their existing yeah, file system with well, more modern requirements. So it should be able, uh, students and teachers should be able to work remote. There need to be compatibility with, well, modern devices like tablets and phones. They needed advanced document collaboration. That's of course how Collabra came in, as well as more you know, capable sharing features um, and, and groups. So they decided to go for Nextcloud. They had been testing it internally. And for them, they needed a product with a clear future, with a roadmap that would align with the big tech players in the market that was forward looking and not backward looking. Uh, a healthy community, of course, was important, and they needed the strong collaboration features uh, and security features that Nextcloud offers, as well as a document compatibility that you get from um, Collabora Online. So, as I said, Nextcloud was already in use internally at SRB, and the new version uh, that or Nextcloud at the time came out with a new release with group folders and access control list, and it was really important for them. Uh, so they first built a test environment simulating essentially the use of Nextcloud in the middle school. Uh, they got good feedback there and then started to first roll it out very small to two and a half thousand uh, users in five middle schools. Uh, and then raised the number to about 33,000 pupils and two and a half thousand teachers and 57 schools uh, around about now in steps. So the infrastructure was designed to be scalable from the start because, of course, they needed a, a fair number of users. As I said, not incredibly huge, but it needed to scale and storage is often a limit. So they used uh, the Ceph, Ceph data storage. Uh, they already had experience with this uh, as well as, you know, load balancers, front ends, uh, Galera cluster, kind of the, the usual suspects, I suppose, if you're building a scalable infrastructure. And this is, of course, one of the benefits of Nextcloud as a PXP application. Almost any organization has extensive experience how to scale it up, which is a big benefit at keeping your costs low because it's a known 
set up that well known how to scale it up. Um, there are common free use everywhere tools and a lot of knowledge to do this, um, which is yeah, helpful. So um, yeah, okay. I copied over a bit of text, but uh, the setup was hosted in Brittany and uh, they're using the features that I mentioned, group folders and ACLs. Uh, for them, it was also important to, um, to use the workspaces. So what they did is that in every folder, they would put some information in the top, as you can see a bit in the screenshot, um, with context about the folder and what the students were allowed to do, etc. And they used then the ACLs to uh, provide fine-grained control for who had access to what data, etc. Um, that was key for, for their use case. So the students, they work from home uh, inside those group folders. They use Collabora. Um, and that way, one of the main reasons for that is also for them to avoid the compatibility issues that you often encounter with Microsoft Office between different systems. Yeah, the Microsoft Office version that the student used is different from the version that the teacher is used to read, uh, read the results. And then there's regular incompatibility problems. And they wanted to avoid this. So the students are using uh, Collabora in the browser at home to edit the documents, and then the teachers are using also Collabora online to view the documents so you avoid any compatibility problems. Uh, normally they have between 50 and 100 users active, but of course during the work from home period and last years it has been a lot more, three or four times more, like three, 400 students that uh, were actively working at any single time um, with others. Um, yeah, they also wanted to make sure that the solution was ready for students with uh, disabilities like dyslexia, for example, and other disabilities uh, like heart uh, yeah, issues with seeing, vision, for example. Uh, for next cloud, accessibility is very important. As you might know, we have different accessibility themes, so you can enable dyslectic friendly font in next cloud, or you can turn on a dark mode. Uh, screen readers work well with next cloud. So these things are important for them as well. Uh, so that yeah, the teachers and the students could work together, even if there were yeah these problems. Um, also internally in the schools, uh, the the management of the schools, so to say, the the back office, the the directors, the teachers themselves, they use Collabora for work on administrative tasks as well. And of course, the rest of Nextcloud. So. Yeah, the user feedback has been incredibly good. Uh, one of the things that they noted to us is that uh, a lot of the teachers and students, of course, had experience with other tools. Um, and they were very happy that, that what was offered from SIB, from the schools, was very familiar and very easy to get into and use. So that the move over to Nextcloud was uh, very easy. Uh, by offering the same experience, but having it hosted in Brittany with the security privacy protection was really a positive experience. Uh, for users who were not familiar with, you know, online file sync and share solutions, um, they gave training and, and, and coaching uh, during the migration phase. Uh, of course, you had, you know, perhaps all the teachers were used to uh, Windows Network Drive like solutions. They needed a bit of training to use a more modern you know, 2020 interface. Um, but yeah, they gave the training for this and um, yeah, this, this worked out very well. Um, they're still working on tablets, especially to interface these in, in a easy way. Um, they're often still using the web interface and, and they're, you know, looking to use more the, the Android and iOS applications. And they want to facilitate more collaboration, a lot of automation features in Nextcloud and as well as on the infrastructure itself where they want to grow beyond the current 40-ish thousand users to larger numbers and, and see um, how far they can take it. So if there are any questions, I'd like to take them, sorry, uh, for the screen now going like weird, infinite, yes. Um, if not questions, then I will just continue with the global scale part of this. Thanks, Jos. It's really exciting to see it. Uh, anyone at all? It'd be great to uh, you know, see all those hundreds of students typing even now, you know, into a beautiful collaborative so. <laughs> life. Yeah, exactly. All right, let me go into the global scale part, then can address any questions perhaps later on. So when you are 
when you are in need of more than a few hundred thousand users. Uh, of course, scaling a single storage or a single database becomes a problem. Yeah, a database, uh, Nextcloud scales perfectly being a PHP app, um, but the underlying storage system, especially as well as the database, they can become more difficult. So in 2017, we had a large customer who needed a Nextcloud installation for tens of millions of users. So we developed our global scale architecture that would allow essentially unlimited scalability. Um, and when you want to scale infinitely, um, that's of course a benefit with the global scale, but there are also other benefits where, which is why also um, a number of uh, NRENs, so like the national research institutes in a number of countries like Sweden and France, they use Nextcloud in a global scale setup. Because one of the advantages that you have with this is that you can create a single Nextcloud instance which actually consists of distributed instances that each have their own um, storage and user management, but still act as a single instance. So from a user perspective, it's one next cloud, but underlying different universities can keep and manage their own storage or outsource it to a single party if they wish. So this is used in, uh, this is offered to all the universities in France, as well as in Sweden at the moment, I think in some other countries as well, but I don't have that all in my head. Um, so it lowers the cost because, of course, if you scale up databases and if you scale up storage, the costs go up often. Uh, a large scale storage system, yeah, it just becomes more expensive. It's just cheaper to have a hundred, you know, one petabyte storage system than a sing single one pet uh, hundred petabyte storage system. Yeah, so for this reason, uh, splitting up is, is how Nextcloud essentially works. Next global scale works. So it's already in production since 2017 at, uh, I think, six or seven customers uh, who do it at large scale. And then there are some customers that use the other features of it. Um, let me quickly go over how it works to get a bit of an idea of how this normally works. So the basic idea is Nextcloud instances are used in small, medium, and large businesses. And when you're at scale, uh, a single server is no longer enough. You need to put tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of users on the server, it's okay to build a little cluster. But once you go beyond half a million users, um, it becomes harder to scale. Usually you have large amounts of data uh, at that point in the database and uh, on the file storage. So what Global Scale essentially does is to split it out in three, uh, in multiple separate servers. Um, and each of these will simply manage a portion of these users as well as a portion of the storage and they're communicating with one another through our essentially our federation features and to make the whole act as a single server there are three components that we use to essentially connect it all together so you have a single authentication point where users go and this redirects them then to the right server where their data and where their user account is located um, there is a server that essentially acts as mediator when you share a file from one user to another and these users are not on the same server. Then the lookup server will make sure that, you know, you get the file from wherever it is. And this is, of course, where it's very handy if you have multiple data servers, data of multiple continents. Uh, one of our biggest customers, they have, I think, four continents, multiple data centers split over four different continents. Uh, and when you go beyond data centers, then it becomes important, of course, that um, users can be redirected in a smooth and efficient way. And last but not least, we have a balancing capabilities where we can migrate users from one system to another when that is necessary. So this is how essentially global scale um, gives you, well, three benefits. It gives you the benefit of lower costs. It gives you the benefit of being able to scale, of course, well, infinitely, and it gives you the benefit of um, being able to integrate multiple organizations, Nextcloud uh, infrastructures into a single one is, as I said, which is what is done uh, by Renatair in France, um, as well as by uh, the Swedish NREN. Um, I can't think of the name right now, but uh, so each of the universities says in control of that data. And this is of course very important, especially at universities where you have like a researcher, a uh, research project where researchers from three or four universities work together. When they're done, where does the data go? Uh, it has to be preserved. 
somebody has to pay for it. Uh, and of course, if you can say, okay, this stays on the server of this university or some of the files stay on this one, others on the other, this way the costs are distributed this way. While if you're using a cloud uh, setup from Microsoft or Google or Dropbox, then it's fine to collaborate for three months, but after the collaboration, who's gonna pay the bill? Yeah, you get all kinds of contractual complexities and there might be an, yeah, an incentive to just shut it down and stop paying the bill, but that means you lose access to the research data, which of course doesn't work. Uh, so instead of having to then move to long-term storage and you know not keep things in a place where it's easily accessible, you can keep it where it is because it's already distributed between the universities in the way that you wish. You can of course always move that. You can of course always move data over anyhow.